will address um, Father's Day at the end, but we will not, um, this talk is not about the divine masculine, which I've done um, so many times. We're going to stay in the theme of, of freedom through flow. So we're going to talk about money. Okay? Oh, yeah. Good. Speak it out, because I like that. So we talked, we started this off in the beginning of the month with Reverend um, Julie Fisher, but last week we got into the money thing, and we're going to continue that flow. So I'm thrilled to learn that many of us took the talk from last week, and, and it really resonated with us. So I'm glad to hear that. And I know that it's Father's Day, and we'll honor um, fathers and, and the way the spirit comes through me at the end, okay? <laughs> Just letting you know I'm letting go of the end. <laughs> so for those who haven't um, been here yet this month, let's clarify what freedom through flow actually means. It means having a consistent, regular, abundant flow of financial prosperity in and through our lives so that we can live in the freedom to do what our heart desires for us to do. It makes it easier when we're, t when we're freed up from the bounds of, of financial stuckness, if you will. So we have the freedom to do and to be that which our heart really sings for us to do. And this just came through this morning for me when I was going over the talk. We were born with a song in our hearts. How many of us leave this planet with that song unsung? Really? There's something within each of us that inspires us, that is, you remember when you were a child and, and what you wanted to do and experience. Not to be exactly, but what to experience. Because here's the deal. If we're in that place of struggling just to make ends meet, if we're in that place of a new repair, a car repair bill, if you will, or to get groceries or to pay the rent, it is really pretty hard. And we're all, you know, been in and out of those places, but it is really hard to keep that prosperity consciousness going, to recognize that there is a song in our heart when we're worried about how we're going to pay the rent. So that's the flow. When we get into that place of knowing that there is one source and supply, and there is something within us that is wanting us to just be it to sing it, the song in our heart. And yet sharing our gifts with the world and having being and doing that, which makes our hearts sing, is what truly life, with a capital L, life desires for us. The Father and I are one. This infinite source of good is wants us to express and resonate and be all that we can be. It's the divine giver. And last week I shared a quote from Sir Francis Bacon, which I just really love. Money is a good servant, but a bad master. Truly, such a, a powerful line there. And I want to be absolutely clear that this month is not about making money our God. That would be the master part. No, it's not about that, but rather putting money into service for God's work as us, through us, so that we can express who we are, our gifts. It makes it just a little bit easier. Anyone agree with that? Yeah, 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 absolutely. It makes it just a little bit easier. That's, that's it. And last week, we took a whole new look at money and aligned ourselves with the frequency of abundance by using a money mantra. If you were here, you remember the money mantra. And we also took a part uh, from Mary Morrissey's Prosperity Plus Two class, M-O-N-E-Y, and I'll briefly go through it. As a reminder, the five ideas were, M is our mindset about money, and O, if you remember, was opportunity awareness. N was your network equals your net worth. Which I love that one. 
E is the energy of calm confidence. And Y is saying yes, yes to the support of the flow in our lives. And then we had five affirmations that we used after each one of those. Do you or anybody remember? Yes. Good. A uh, one person? Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not asking you to repeat you know, note by heart because we're gonna do we did something last week that I would like us to do again. We had that power position. Do we remember yes. the power yes. position? Yes. Shoulders back, chin up, arms straight up yes. with a V, ready to receive. This is the power. And repeat after me. This is the whole money mantra prayer. I live in an abundant universe. I live in an abundant universe. That's the Expressing its limitless supply. Through me. Yeah, can we get it all? And standing up actually is is doing this on steroids. So standing up is better. I make welcome. I make welcome. I make welcome. Attune to. Take action. On any and all opportunities. That come my way. To increase the flow of abundance in my life. To increase the flow of abundance in my life. I recognize that money flows to me. I recognize that money flows to me. Easily and effortlessly. Easily and effortlessly. And I move through my day. And I move through my day. With calm expansion. With calm expansion. I recognize that, well, we did this one, okay. With calm confidence. With calm confidence. Knowing this is so. Knowing this is so. I say yes. I say yes. Only to those things. Only to those things. That lead to my greater expansion. That lead to my greater expansion. Flow and abundance in my life. Flow and abundance in my life. And so it is. And so it is. Okay. in this V manner. It's expecting the good to fill your life because it does fill your life. It's present. We just need to tap into it a little more consciously. Okay. So, let's move forward. <laughs> so that gets us to this day, Tuesday. <coughs> That was from last week, and now we're moving into an, an addendum, or not an addendum, a deeper way of connecting with that flow. So we're going to explore the idea that you are provided for always in always. Did you know that? You are always provided for. Did you ever notice when you worry and stress, but then when you let go, it's like the universe always takes over. This is the provider, the divine provider in all ways. Perhaps the greatest spiritual prosperity lesson ever given came from the ascended master, Jesus, the Christ. And this is so cool. And you know I love this, when synchronicity just flows. Because I don't know what are the practitioners going to be reading. I don't ask to know it. And she quoted the, the exact quotes that I'm going to be using today. So I'm going to take them a little deeper. Thank you, Spirit. Then I know I'm on the right track. It is recorded at Luke 12, beginning at verse 22. And you may have heard it before, but maybe not in the exact way that George Lambs's Bible is interpreted, so it might be a little renewed understanding. So listen with an open heart, fresh ears, and really, really hear what he is saying about the notion that you are provided for always in all ways. And therefore I say unto you, do not worry for your life, what you will eat, nor for your body what you will wear. For life is much more important than food and clothing. Observe the ravens, for they do not sow nor reap. And they have no storehouses and barns, 
and yet God feeds them. How much more important are you than those birds? Who among, who among you, by worrying, can add to his stature one cubit? So if you are not able to do the smallest thing, why do you worry about the rest? And he continues, this is from the Bible. Observe the flowers, how they grow. For they do not toil, nor do they spin. But I say to you, that not even Solomon in all of his glory was arrayed like one of these. <clears throat> and if God clothed in such fashion the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow falls into the fireplace, how much more is he to you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not be anxious about what you will eat or what you will drink, and let not your mind be disturbed by these things. And your father knows that these things are also necessary for you. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not be afraid, O oh little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Or we might have as um, Jolene just read, we might have heard the last line. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And I just love that. It's the father, it's Father's Day, and we're talking about, and we're going to get into the father aspect, and if it brings up stuff for you at the end, but it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. All we have to do is to be open to receive it. All. That's all. <laughs> Just be open. I mean, yes. All is the big A-L-L, -L, right? I looked up Father in the compilation of Ernest Holmes' writings, and he talks about the Father a lot. And usually when he writes about the Father, there is always about, there's always abundance or being provided for in all ways. So here's a few. This is from Spiritual Awareness by Ernest Holmes. Each of us is heir to the riches and power and glory of the kingdom of God. We are sons and daughters of the one Father who freely gives us his limitless abundance. From 365, Holmes writes, in the unity of humankind with spirit, there can be no lack or limitation. Each of us is entitled to all that our Father has. And he goes on there. But this is also from the Philosophy of Jesus, which is a book that Ernest Holmes wrote, The Philosophy of Jesus. In that he wrote, here is where our great experiment in using the power that Jesus understood starts. This is the very beginning of it. We must believe that there is a divine presence. Of course, our belief does not create it. It merely acknowledges it. It is this acknowledgment of the divine presence that Jesus was referring to when he said, Your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. How beautiful. How assuring that feels to me, and how powerful those words are. How powerful. And yet I wonder, so have some of us negate the meaning of the words and how the message, the, how it was delivered. We negate it when we get, possibly, some of us, to the father part. The father. Now I might say that word. How do you say father in America? Just say it for me. Father. Okay, because this is an English accent. That one word comes out father. So just want to let you know if he comes out a bit odd. Oh well, so am I. So let's just break that down a little bit then. Do not be afraid, O oh little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Or, with that father part in there, we are all sons and daughters of the one father who freely gives. Each of us is entitled to all that our father has. 
hearing the word over and over again. Your father knoweth what things ye need before ye ask. Now we think of the idea, the concept of father, do we think of, okay, this is other ways of thinking of that one word, the provider, protector, supporter, source, guardian, giver. And that is what we are told in scripture and from Ernest Holmes, that God is the provider, the protector, the supporter, the, the guardian, the source of all our good, the divine giver. But if you had, if you were brought up in any way an unloving, maybe distant, maybe abusive relationship with your father, you most definitely would have some kind of emotional, psychological, and spiritual baggage to, that, to those statements that I just read. It would, be, it would be something in your subconscious, and maybe even in your conscious mind. But, but in that, we put up, it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. If we put up a block, do you think we stop our flow? Mm -hmm. So maybe it's time just to, to look at that and maybe let it go. I personally, I personally really don't have an issue with the word father, but I know that many people do. So last night, this is the part where spirit takes over. So last night I was thinking, because I said to myself, you, I always say, I have no issue around father, no issue like no memory, nothing, of this man that was part of my life. There's nothing, there's nothing around it. And then last night I decided to go a little deeper and to see, there has to be something, there had to be something in me, some emotion. And what I felt was this deep compassion. And that's what I felt for him as a young child, deep compassion. Because here was a man whose mother died in childbirth in rural Ireland when he was 12. And he had to help raise his four brothers. And his sister was sent away because she was a girl, she was three. So right off the bat, he kind of had a rough start of it. And then, he decided for whatever the sole purpose is to marry an abuser. So I grew up seeing father being <coughs> abused emotionally, psychologically, and sometimes physically. This is my stuff around the word father, but still, there was, I never was, I never came from a place of, well, he should have been there for me, you know? My heart was so cracked open with compassion for this man, who was a gentle, good man, who became a total alcoholic to numb himself and eventually died from it. But he was a man that really did not have a mean bone in his body. So what I have around Father for myself is compassion, yet, Last night, it brought up a lot of emotions. So there's somewhere else for me to travel, to see. It's just amazing all the things that flooded into my mind with that awareness. Because I never thought about him as an adult. I never thought about him. But there are many of us that have issues around the father figure. And so if there is any healing that we need to do today, then we're going to do that. This is the day to at least address it and maybe move through it. It is Father's Day after all, right? So let's just take a deep breath together. We'll do a short, very short meditation, a healing meditation. For your own father or for yourself, as a father or not, and if you had an ideal father, then you can hold the high watch for the rest of us. 
And so we just take a breath together. <coughs> and realize that your father learned to be a father from his father, who learned it from his father, <coughs> who learned it from his. Each of them doing the absolute best that they could. When we know better, we do better. <coughs> so go back in time, before you were even born, born into this physical world, but you still existed. And see your father, look down, and see your father as a baby. It's pure and innocent before life <coughs> happened. And if you can connect heart to heart with him at that time, let him say something to you from that space. Maybe, I really love you, from that space of being this innocent baby. Yes. And so take another breath and just bring yourself back into this room. Just making that connection with this baby, with your dad. And now I want to share an interesting piece of information. This is from Rocco Arachetti, who is a, a phenomenal Arama Aramaic scholar. And he tells us, he tells us that when Jesus referred to God as Father, in the context of the language of that time, it was a term of endearment and not necessarily a reference to God that he was speaking about. And the role of father as we understand it. Rather, father simply meant beloved. We'll take that in. If in the time of Jesus, the father and I are one, the beloved and I are one, it was a term of endearment. Erico tells us that among Aramaic and Arab speaking, people of that time, a sister would call her sister father. A mother would call her son father. And even a father would call his son father, beloved. It was a term of endearment. Kind of shifts things a little. And that, that came, that was, um, that reading part came from, from Rocco Arachetti, but it came from Science of Mind magazine in which she wrote an article few years ago. But in order for us, us to have the freedom of flow, it is a relationship with the beloved that we must cultivate, that we must nurture. Because all of these emotional relationships we've had can block our flow. If there is energy, we're pure energy, you know this, well that's energy being dammed up. It's being blocked. So we move through it, through prayer work, through meditation, through contemplation and study. That is why we are told in Jesus' powerful prosperity teachings, seek first the kingdom of God and all will be added. Seek first your connection in your spiritual life to a higher power the only power, the creative power of the universe. So we open ourselves up when we do that to the power and presence of God the Father, God the Beloved, by realizing that we are sons and daughters of the Beloved. Just moving away from the word Father. We are sons and daughters of the Beloved who freely gives us of his limitless abundance. We are entitled to all the beloved has. Our beloved 
knows what things we have need of before we ask. And we need not be afraid, for our beloved is pleased to give us the kingdom. It just flows a little differently, doesn't it? So on this, this belief that there is a power for good, whether we call it Father, whatever we want to call it, we can depend on it, always knowing that in all ways, it is always there for us to guide us, to love us, to give to us in ways that we cannot do for ourselves. Being in that flow of, is such a freedom, such a freedom that we gift, we gift and give to ourselves. And so, I say happy Father's Day, happy beloved day to mm -hmm. each and every one.